Hi, I'm the Morelander and this is Morelander EDC. Now, a few months back, Oliver from EC Knives got in touch and, you know, we just ended up chewing the fat about life and knives and stuff. And, you know, we asked if I'd like to try out one of his knives and, well, I'm not gonna say no, am I? Um, so what we are here today to look at is a collection of things from EC Knives. Now there are actually a few additional extras in here. We do have the knife that we'll have a look at today, but Oliver was nice enough to throw in a few additional extras as well. Uh, so it arrives in this little box. I'm just gonna take these out. So in here you also get a little microfiber cloth. Uh, and then on the bottom here, there's some stickers and an authentication card in there as well, which I think is nice. You know, it's great that they're, they're included. Um, it definitely means I have a little sticker a little sticker cabinet that I keep my keep a lot of my stuff in, so um, I add to these. So what we've got is so we have the, the little mini cleaver knife. There's also a little pry bar in here as well, and then we also have one of these worry stones. Now I, I'm going to go through all of these, so don't worry about that. In fact, if I rub my little worry stone, it'll stop me from worrying about that. I'm just going to put those there to the side for one second, uh, and for now we'll take a bit of a closer look at the actual knife itself. Now as we usually do, we'll go through some measurements, we'll have a look at some materials, and then we'll have a look around the knife. Um, as far as your measurements are concerned, when it is open, hopefully you'll be able to see it's a really nice little mini cleaver. Uh, so open, it comes in at 120 millimeters from the end of the blade all the way to the butt of the knife here. When it's closed, it comes in at 87 millimeters. Now I have included the distance or the, the, the extra distance here with the, uh, with the tang on this mainly because I, I think it's right that you measure it with that because that is the, the, the true full length of it when it, when it is shut. Um, it's a friction folder, so you do get an extended tang. If you're new to knives and you're new to um, the different types of knives that there are, I suppose, just to give you an extra little a bit of information here. Uh, so a friction folder generally has uh, an extended tang in this, so the the part that would normally go into the handle of the knife or the part past um, that goes into here is called the tang so uh, that the tang on this folds back into the knife um, the mechanism or the, the pivot mechanism on this this is a freely open and closable um, slip joint which means that it is fine for UK legal carry um, as you can see the, the actual cutting edge or the length of the blade um, is what is it now it's 40 millimeters which is which is an inch and a half so you definitely need to worry here in the UK it's three inches or less it's perfectly legal to carry um, but what I find personally I'm a huge fan of friction folders mainly because as you hold the knife um, it does give you that extra little bit of security about it closing on on yourself um, but I suppose with the legality of it, it isn't a lock. It just it just holds it into position there. You can put your thumb on it, and it just makes it a little bit easier uh, to manipulate and to to do things with. For me, I, that, that's generally why I'm a I'm a big friction folder fan. Uh, but yes, so we got into the the ex, the, the the length of it open. It comes in at uh, 87 millimeters, or about three and a half inches. The blade stock on this is really nice blade stock. Um, it's quite um, a popular blade stock for knife makers, um, which is the 1084 steel. Now 1084 is a tool steel, it's a high carbon steel. Um, and as the name would suggest, a tool steel is the type of steel that you'll find that your screwdrivers, your chisels, all of those sort of carpentry and mechanical kind of tools, a lot of them are made from. The main reason for that is because it's a very tough steel. Now there's a difference between tough steels and hard steels. Um, generally, tough steels are your high carbon steels hard steels are your stainless steels hard steels have a habit of chipping whereas um, tough steels like a tool steel has a less chance of um, 
well, of, of chipping. And plus, if you do damage the edge, if you roll this or in any sort of way, you should be able to get back, uh, should, should be able to get it back to, you know, what you'd want from it. Um, the other kind of way up that you have between a stainless steel and a tool steel or a stainless steel and a high carbon steel is with a stainless steel there's very little maintenance that you have to do to it um, whereas with a carbon steel there is a little bit of maintenance so you just need to make sure that you keep it oiled um, or if you get it wet that you clean it and dry it as quickly as well not as quickly as possible but um, if, you, if you leave it so that it's wet or it's around moisture you might find uh, that it, it will start to rust the finish on this you might look at this and think oh he's not done a particularly good job of cleaning that up especially when you look at some of the other ones where he's done a really nice not i wouldn't say a high polish to them but it definitely looks a little bit cleaner than that than than the model that i have here and i will say so this is where you insert the meme from friends where the guy was like oh did you wash your hands and she's like no they're still oh and he's like no i like them dirty that's kind of what i said to him what i wanted to have was this almost as though you know the um the forging scale had been left on there i even said i, I want it to look dirty I quite like that. I, I, I think it's a shame sometimes that some knife makers take a lot of that scale off. It's the character that, for me, makes it completely unique. Um, so I did. I asked him to leave that on there. He did a couple of other things. I think he put some bluing on here and then scratched some of it off, so you can see here where the uh, where the grind has been put onto this. Uh, whereas here on the side, uh, on, on the Ricasso here, you can see where it's still got some of the marks from the heat treatment. I, I love it I, personally. For me, I think it adds a lot of character to the knife. Um, now, I mean, I've waffled on for a bit there. Let's 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 get back to some of the measurements. The the thickness of the blade stock is two millimeters, which is great, um, and the overall thickness of the scales comes in at seventeen millimeters. Now, the scales themselves, so these are made from G10, um, and the this to to this part of it is completely customizable. So uh, I'll ask what sort of scales I wanted to go for. There were a few different types of hardwoods that he'd got. Um, there was, I think there was a couple of different types of resin ones. I'll get back to you on that one, but I'm sure there's a couple of resins. Um, and I went for the G10 on this. Um, and so he's custom layered this so that we've got gray with some orange and then some gray through there. I'd randomly spent the day before looking at some old Ford GT cars from like, when did the Ford GT beat Ferrari? I want to say the 50s, 60s, 70s, whenever it was. So I'd got this grey and orange theme in my head. I also, when I play games, I generally set up my characters as with with uh, with grey and, and orange as well. So when he said he could perfectly make whatever scales I wanted to, I was like, yeah, we've got to go with this. It looks awesome. Uh, as far as the construction is concerned, you have your pivot pin here at the end. There is a pin here which stops the rotation, so hopefully you'll be able to see there's a small nook in there, uh, and that stops it from over-rotating and, and, and keeping it in place. And then the last pin here is a barrel spacer down on the end there, and you can see that there is a, there's actually an additional washer in there for the, for the spacer. Um, I was intrigued, I wanted to take it apart, uh, so I took it apart, and yes, so, so, the, so the, the screw, what's the type of pin, is it called a Chicago pin, where, where you have the pin in the middle and then you, the two uh, screws that go in either side of it, and then there is a, there's a washer in there to add that nice accent colour. Have had a look through his website and through some of the other uh, knives that he's made, um, and I, I believe that there are different uh, different washers for these as well. So this doesn't screw directly in. There is a there is a washer underneath this uh, this uh, th these these two screws here, which again is just a nice feature. It's it's a nice accent as well. Um, across the top across the top of the spine here, this is. 
I mean, you can shave you can shave your uh, thumbnails with these, so there's a nice 90 degree on there. If you needed to strike a ferro rod maybe with this, then you can do. The extended tang on the end here has this nice little hook that can be used as a bottle opener if you'd like to as well. And there's some jimping here, so across the spine of the scales, uh, and when you pull this out across the tang or across the spine into the tang here, uh, it matches that as well. So you can get a good grip on this. Now, as far as the grip in your hand is concerned, it's a good three fingers. So you're, there is a, there's a finger choil here for your index finger. And then, I mean, I have medium to large size hands and then I can get another two fingers around there. And it's a good grip. I think for a small mini chopper like this, it, it really is the perfect size for it. But if you wanted to, so through where this space is here at the back, you could easily take something like a lanyard, pass it through there and pull it tight. Um, I, I, a lot of people say, why do you have lanyards on knives? For, for some people, one, it makes it easier to find in your pocket, and two, it also helps with this baby finger to grip it. You can get a good hold on the knife and then also hold onto the lanyard as well so that you get a full grip on the knife to stop it from moving in your hand. As far as the grind, so getting back to the actual, uh, back to the, uh, the the geometry and geometry and grind of the knife, it is a fully flat grind that goes all the way up from uh, from the cut all the way up to the spine, from the belly to the spine, uh, and comes all the way from the front to the back. So there is a slight curve in this, but it's only really here to the end. I've found that that's perfect for slicing because, as I'm sure you are, this will probably be used. For opening um, Amazon boxes and things like that for pretty much anything else. Do you have a small sharpening choil here just to keep your sharpening away from the ricasso and keep that plunge line nice. When it folds, it folds perfectly centered. Um, the uh, pivot or at least um, the, on, on the inside here it has brass, brass washers. Um, I found that I've tightened this up just a little bit more than I would do with some other knives, mainly because due to the size of it, um, I think with a smaller knife, sometimes it has a habit of coming open a little bit more in your pocket. And, and I mean, when I first got this, it didn't. Um, but again, I just, I just find with slip joints and something that doesn't have a detent, I think that's what I probably should have said. But with there not being a detent on here, um, I do fasten them just a little bit more. But as far as a little chopper is concerned, I think this screams character. I really do. I'm glad I went with the color selection that I did on here and I'm also really glad that I went make it dirty I like it dirty um, yeah so there you go now following on the theme with the color on here actually goes through oh, to to these so this is a small titanium pry bar oh, so I think it just went out of focus there for a second this is a small titanium pry bar with a, a small bottle opener here uh, and then it's also gone so if you can see through the side we've got some orange and then we've got some grey G10 on here. If you wanted to you could take these off, uh, they, they do just screw straight onto here or you could ask if you wanted to have one of these then you could ask not to have that on or ask. And, and pretty much everything here, if I've not said it already, is as is, is customizable as you'd like. This is the, one of the best things about um, knives like this you know these are bespoke knives in in as such that you can decide how you want to update these and you know how you want them to look oh sorry one thing that i completely forgot so the the um the uh, metal on this um oliver does all of his heat treats in house um as i mentioned this is the 1084 steel however he is going to be upgrading the steel soon uh, to m390 which is great um because of the heat treat process with that he'll be doing that outside of house um is a company that he works with to do those however everything else you know the the, the, the crafting of the knife will be brought back in-house uh, to have them finished off. On this one, I was given a couple of options as well. I could have gone dirty with this, uh, but instead, 
titanium the, the way that you can heat uh, titanium to be able to get these beautiful colors i just had to had to go with this it, it's one of my favorite ways of being able to color and give titanium these characteristics and then the last one was this little um worry stone so it does come with this little lanyard in fact just to show you what i meant so you could take this off there put it on to here give it a bit of a pull and there you have that four fingers so you can get your three fingers around the knife and then you can also get a good grip on the lanyard there as well um, but it, it, it does come with a lanyard hole on this I guess if you wanted to you could probably ask and say don't put the hole on there um, on the on whichever I don't know let's call this the the, the rough side Let's put some lines so on this side it's got a very smooth line that you can run your finger through or you've got some kind of rough bits here and then on the on the opposite side you can just sit and just just kind of stroke and rub this i've asked what sort of grits he goes through and i've just completely forgotten as soon as i said that i've completely forgotten i think he goes from an 80 up to either a 600 or an 800 i'll, I'll leave here he he did tell me what, what what he goes up to so it's beautifully smooth it really is it's just kind of very silky and soft in your hand but if you're the type of person that you know worries and just needs something to distract yourself just having something that you can manipulate in your hand is very good for that sort of stuff but for the three together I think they all I think they all complement each other um, and again they all show you know the the, the talent that uh, that Oliver's got and he put he puts into his knives I do truly believe that there is something to be said about people that dedicate their time to a craft. Call them craftsmen, craftswomen, craftspeople, crafts thems, anyway. Um, that, that dedication and time on just, you know, creating something and I, I think in the creative space that I work in you know I, I mean I, my craft is completely different to actually working in my hands to produce a product like this but I certainly appreciate the time and the effort that's put into something to just the finesses and you know building on things um, you should definitely check out uh, EC knives on uh, on Instagram and Facebook because you can see you can see the development over the years of of how the knives have progressed and I think this wee chopper has got a lot of character the actual construction of it is great it fits really nice in the hand I'm definitely gonna add a small little lanyard to this just to catch that baby finger but yeah really impressed the biggest thing hopefully that you'll take from this is just supporting smaller makers and I, I, I think for me that's when I get a lot of pride in being able to show off items like this one from UK makers although you know I'm, I'm not just I only like to show off UK makers but makers from all over the world these small crafts men and women that again, you know, that are just dedicating their time to their craft and just producing beautiful little items like this. So as I mentioned before, you know, I, I, I will, uh, well, at least I mentioned checking them out, checking uh, Oliver and, and EC Knives on Instagram and Facebook. I will leave some of their links below. I'll also leave some of my social media links as well here on Moreland DC and my sister channel, uh, Moreland Tactical. But for now, as always, stay safe, stay Moorlander and stay EDC. We in focus? Focus, focus, focus. What's, I don't know, what's German for focus? Probably something like, I was gonna say, I don't know. French for focus? What's Spanish? Okay, let's hear in the comments below. What's fr whatever language you speak, how do you say focus in your language? And then I'll try some new languages out in the future. Come on, fo. I just need to get it in a light properly, didn't I? You wazik. Someone is always making a noise. Always. I can go in now. Whoever it is will stop making the noise. I could have a kip, four or five hours, 
no noise through that sleep whatsoever. I'm a heavy sleeper anyway. Come back outside, set back up, someone will make the noise. It's a fact of life. Once you embrace that, embrace the chaos, then you'll live a fulfilling, fulfilled life. And shoot his cat every time it comes into the garden. Just kidding, don't shoot cats. I tie them up, put them in plastic bags and throw them in the canal. <laughs> Just kidding. Or am I? Hi, I'm the Moorlander, this is Moorlander EDC. Now, a few months ago, Oliver from EC Knives. It is EC Knives, why have I got CE Knives in my head? Because I'm an idiot. Because you're not, but... I don't know if I waffled that last bit. I think I got the point over that I wanted to make. There were a few additional extras that he said that he'd throw in, so... Put it back in. I forgot that I had it in my pocket. Hi, I'm the Moorlander and this is Moorlander EDC. Now a few weeks... Blah, 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 blah. It wasn't weeks, it was months. Still making the noise. You just got to deal with it. You just got to deal with it. But yes, I hope you all have a good Wednesday, by the way. Uh, hump day already, so that's always good. Even closer to the weekend. Right, uh, have a good Wednesday. See you soon. Love you lots. Bye. No, seriously, you can go now. I've got work to do. I'm on my lunch. Or maybe you're on your lunch watching this. Anyway, enough waffling. See you then.